Hey there, YouTubers. This is Daniel Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Thank you for tuning in again. This is our um, in this in this segment we're going to continue our loops study using the for and next um, and using a variable of currently x. What we're going to do immediately right off the bat, I want to give this some titles for our custom report here. So I don't want to actually have this to be writing in column one, excuse me, row one, uh, right off the bat. I want to take it from two to ten. So I'm going to tell it for x equals two, row two to ten. And uh, as you'll see, it, that way it will not overwrite our, it won't overwrite, overwrite our column headers. So let's put date here. Uh, let's put, um, I don't remember what we had in here. I know we had pizza in here. Why not? We'll call this the food. Um, and we had the uh, we had a random number. We'll I'll call it number. Let's go back to our Visual Basic. And uh, coincidentally, uh, if I exit it out of there, oh no! What do we do? You know how to get there. We're going to either click on here, Alt, and it shows Alt F11. We're going to hit that. You're going to get real good at hitting Alt F11 to toggle here and the Visual Basic Editor. Okay, Alt F11 will get you there immediately without clicking anything. So uh, we're back here. Where we're going to go from two to ten. Um, without hesitation, we're going to go ahead and run this. We're saying uh, date plus seven. That means a week from today is always going to go in column one, and in column two, uh, each each time we loop through. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 10. Each time, column 2 is going to be whatever the current row number is times 15. And in uh, column 3, where we have food, we're going to, right now it's just going to be pizza. So we're going to have some fun with this, uh, with some if-then statements in just a moment. Right now I'm going to run it and show you what happens when you just run it as it is. I'm going to hit F5, which you can see by hovering over the play button. I'm going to hit F5 with, while well, selected within my procedure. Okay, here's what happened. As we see, just like before, yeah, only it did not overwrite column 1 because we took it off. What would happen if we put 1 to 10? Uh, well, you know what's going to happen. It's going to put the date here. It's going to put 1 times 15 here and pizza there. Um, and <clears throat> one thing I want to note here if you are running macros, you if you're doing something uh, that you're not certain what's going to happen, and this is going to happen in the beginning, you want to you're going to want to save your workbook before you run the macro because there is no undo button. Um, you can't click undo and undo a macro. It doesn't save its its progress. It, once it's it's done, it's done. So you need to save right before you run it. That being said. Let's play around a little bit with this food object here. We're going to use what's called an if-then statement right here. So I'm going to take this and hit tab, and we're going to um, hit backspace there. We're going to say if, let's do something with with cells at x comma 2. Let's do that. If um, we're going to have it analyze the number here. Let's say if it's an even number, we're going to put a, a different word than pizza in it. If it's, you know, if it's regular, then who cares? It'll leave it alone. So we're going to say if whatever is in cells x comma two, which we just wrote on there before, if that is, well, no, let's just say if it's greater than a uh, hundred, because we have a few that are going to meet that criteria. If this is greater than one hundred then, and you actually have to type the word if and hit a space, and when you type your criteria, you type a space and put then. Uh, in, in formulas, you just put commas, but this we're actually writing an actual in a sentence statement. If this is greater than the value of 100, then we'll go ahead and let the next one be equal to pizza. And then I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to Shift tab, that'll take you back and forth. Shift tab, shift tab, shift tab. I'm going to say end if. And this is very important to put an end if in there. If you don't, it's going to give you an error. I'll show you that right now. 
they're going to say, you never closed out your if statement. We don't know when to stop, when to start this. So uh, I hit F5 to run it, and sure enough, it gave me one of these errors. Let's put end if. So we've ended that statement. You notice I tabbed this one out here so we can see what's exactly contained within our if statement. It's easier on the eyes. It's not required to run. So let's do that. I'm going to erase all this stuff here. Let's see what actually happens when we step by step this. So I'm going to hit F8. So now we're on X has the value of, excuse me, I don't know. I guess I need to change that back. Excuse me. Let me stop that and start it over. We want to go from 2 to 10. If we went to 1 to 10, we'd overwrite our headers. From x, for x equals 2 to 10. So now x equals 2. Next time around, it'll be 3 and so on. So uh, row 2, column 1 equals next week, date plus, date plus 7 is next week. We've done that. Now this one is pretty standard. Um, 2 comma 2, so that's going to be B2 equals 2 times 15, so it's 30. Now, here is our if statement. If um, whatever is contained, uh, if that number is greater than 100, then let's see what happens when I hit F8. Oh, they're saying that 30 is not greater than 100. They're correct. Let's go to the next one. Uh, 3, okay, so column or excuse me, row 3, If is that greater than 100? Nope, skipping it. They didn't write anything in there. And let's go on 60, 75, nope, 90, nope. Now let's watch this. I'm going to hit F8 right here. They're saying if this is greater than 100, it is. So now when I hit F8, instead of skipping over right here, it actually is going to take in consideration all the different orders that we have. We only have we only have one currently. Uh, but if we had a big line of procedures, it could do that. Oh, I threw it off. I dra You can drag your where you want to be also by moving this yellow arrow. We were here, so we're back here again. Uh, this equals pizza now that the value is greater than 100. And sure enough, we put pizza in there. And we'll hit F5 and, well, run through it a couple more times. This 120 is greater than 100, yes, so pizza. And the next one, 135, is greater than 100, so pizza. So if I hit F5 to complete it, all the ones that were greater than 100 right here, in this or excuse me, this column, it put the value of pizza. Now, how about we put an else? That means otherwise. So if I hit here, I'm going to shift tab. I'm going to say else or otherwise is what that means. Hit enter, hit tab, so the spacing is correct. Uh, we're going to say otherwise the cell of, this the same cell is going to be equal to not pizza. Um, so let's try that now. So we're saying essentially if this is greater than a hundred then put the word pizza otherwise, instead of leaving it hanging, leaving it blank, otherwise, say not pizza. Let's run our macro again. And first, let's debug it, because I want you to see what happens. I'm hitting F8 several times to get to here. We already are running. So I said if this is greater than 100, 30 is not greater than 100. So it immediately skips over this and goes to the else, and everything that's in the else column. So otherwise, it's going to be not pizza. So let's expand that a little bit so we can see everything going on. Let's see, is 45 greater than 100? No, not pizza. Um, 60? Nope, not pizza. 75? Nope, not pizza. 90? Not pizza. And 105 is going to be pizza. So it's a little quirky way of learning that, but that's a good enough example. I'm going to hit F5 and sure enough it ran a macro analyzing each number and when it got over our threshold of 100 it said pizza instead of not pizza. And of course you could change that to be a number 0 uh, and I'll hit F5 and run that. Zeros, okay? Or you could have it be the value of false which is an actual value. You notice it's blue and it capitalized itself. That's a value. True or false are values. So we'll say it's going to equal false. It's not going to be valid or something. 
and we could have this be equal to true. We wanted it to be true if our th if it was over a hundred, and it doesn't have to be food. We could say, um, you know, bonus. If our bonus, you know, if we made over a hundred sales or something, I'll call this sales, just to make the numbers more real. Um, if they got more than a hundred sales, then true. Otherwise, we'll say false. Okay. Um, let's run that now, and sure enough, um, it has done those values accurately. Again, we can run this macro by hitting Alt F8 or clicking the macros button there. Let's hit Alt F8. Okay, and we can run test one this way also. So by double clicking on it or hitting run, Alt F8 again from scratch, let's hit run. And there is our macro lightning speed. Thank you again for watching this. We'll be doing more on loops and all kinds of things with variables, running custom reports from special menus and all kinds of things like that, filling list boxes, combo boxes, uh, working with, again, user forms, and we can use you know, buttons on uh, a page and all kinds of things like this to where when you click on the button, it'll run the macro. In fact, I just ran through that. You'll probably want to see that in slow-mo, but I just assigned our macro to this button. And we'll be doing all kinds of fun things like that. So thanks for watching, and God bless. Bye.